Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. Today we've got another one for you on the Toyota pickup truck. Behind me we've got the 1987 Toyota Hilux pickup truck. And recently we installed the motor. As is life on YouTube, we got a lot of comments on this one, especially what we should have done better. The biggest comment by far is that the motor was too low. So you can see it is low. When I first got all the content together, I thought, I don't know if I can release this because I thought it was too low. You guys all agreed with me, but I'm gonna work on a plan B. So today is plan B. So currently the lowest spot, we've got 11 inches of ground clearance. That actually is quite a bit for uh, most cars and trucks, but it is a little bit lower than stock. So this one is right at, I'm gonna say six and a quarter. That means this was six and a quarter inches lower than the mount on the frame. With this design, we're actually gonna be higher than the original stock. Here's the scan, and this is the new motor mount we're planning on, and it is actually about three inches or a little over three inches higher than the previous one. So if we grab the mounting surface, so 5.8. So again, this will be up higher than the original mount for the transmission and transfer case. We should actually have more clearance than stock. We're gonna have some similar mounting plates that we had before here and here, but this time we're gonna use some tubing and we're gonna do some bends and it's gonna still pick up the motor mounts. We've got some uh, cross braces and such, and this side's gonna be mounted right here. So all the flat things we'll get from send, cut, send. But for the tubing, we'll go ahead and start bending and notching that now. All right, we got three of those all cut. We're ready to go. Next, we need about 48 inches to create uh, those bend pieces. And so we'll need two of them. We got this dialed in at a 60 degrees. We'll just kind of measure, make sure we got the right length here and then we'll do the other side. I have two of these made now. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve here, but I think we got them close enough. So the angles are pretty much spot on. The lengths are close. I think they're gonna be close enough. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and notch the ends where they're gonna be mounted to other tubes. We got the motor and motor mount down. It's on our creeper here, so we can move it around. So the new plan is we're still gonna use those same uh, mounting points on both sides, but we're actually gonna move the motor up as far as it will go. It gives us about an extra three inches. And so basically the new frame will actually be higher than the transmission mount, the original transmission mount. So now that we've got this off, we're gonna put our new plates on and start some welding. Several months ago, I got the standing desk from FlexiSpot and it's time to give you guys an update. So this is the FlexiSpot desk. This is the standing desk, it can go up and down. And I've had this one for about six months, maybe nine months. It has been fantastic. I love that it can go up and down. Um, it's very durable. As you can see, it lasts the test of time. As things are in my garage, uh, sometimes things get pretty full, things have to be moved from place to place. This happened to be outside the garage while we were shuffling a few things. And my wife said, hey, I need something like that for my classroom. So as you can see, it spent the last little bit inside a classroom. And if you think a garage environment is tough, wait till you see these guys. I don't know what you think of when you think of standing desks, but for me, holy cow, this blew away all my expectations. This is a seriously sturdy desk. It's got a static load capacity of 540 pounds. That means like you can put an engine on it. It is rock solid. I mean, you can like hit it pretty good and it doesn't budge. It's got some serious weight and some serious quality to it. So it's got an advanced function keypad where you can program both a standing height as well as a sitting height. So you can see it works for heights that are very tall. Again, this would be great for me. So it even has a USB plug-in so you can charge all your devices. So I think this would be great for both office environment as well as something to put in your garage. These are some serious quality products. So if you're interested in anything like this, go check them out. So as you can see, this is a great desk. It stands the test of time. And if you're interested in something like this, I'll leave a link in the video description below. These are the parts for the Toyota motor mount. So for the Toyota pickup, we got a lot of comments, not all of them great. So I thought what better way to bring a little interest than to read some of them throughout this video. Lenny Ross 2813. Is it me or is that motor hanging real low? Like grandpa's nuts low. Lenny, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll trust you on that one. Pure energy 555. What a waste. Ruined a perfectly good engineered truck. Robert Roach 8339. That motor's gonna drag on the ground. Twat did you say? 304. Should have put that under the hood to save some ground clearance. Basically made four wheel drive worthless with how low the ground clearance is now. 
All right, got this one all welded up. We'll unclamp it. This one was gonna go in the car. This is obviously the one motor mount. And we're gonna put on the tubes kind of there and there. And then those long bent tubes are gonna go from this side to the other side. All right, it's gonna put plates and things on, but you notice there's just a ton of rust. I'm pretty sure we can get a lot of that off. IH Diesel Man. Drive lines don't have to be perfectly straight. Why did you choose to mount that motor so low? Basically ruined the breakover angle and off-road capabilities of that legendary truck. Very disappointing. John Galt, 517. Man, that motor seems to hang pretty low. At Yasin, 040190. Am I seeing it wrong? or did you drastically reduce the ground clearance? Black Townie, 999. That motor is extremely low. That's never going off pavement other than smooth gravel road. No offense, but how can that truck drive over the thick nickel? I know how, <laughs> I know we aim for easy, but you gotta keep some functionality too, bro. Dirty T, that motor is sitting extremely low. Big Tony, 8978. Ground clearance is gonna be a serious issue. Arnold Schwarzenegger, 5670. Ruined a good truck. RC Drift, 69. Why the hell is that motor sitting so much lower are so much under the car. There's no off-road or even sandways capability anymore. See Dinitz? So it looks like the motor sits pretty low, almost lower than the axles. Optical illusion? If not, why did you mount it so low? Curious. All right, we've got the motor uh, one mount is in position and we just kind of jacked it up as high as we can. You can see the very top, there's very little clearance. I might need to drop it down just a titch so if we kind of rumble the motor a little bit, it doesn't hit the transmission tunnel there but we're pretty close. So I think this is about where we're gonna have it. So now it's time to uh, weld on the tubes that we have and get the supports for these other mounts. Okay, I've got the placement for our motor mount. I've marked where we need to do the whole notch. So uh, I'll go ahead and weld these, notch it, put it in place, and then I can weld the other uh, post. And then we gotta do the same thing for the other side. R Trotier 14. I'm no expert, but isn't your motor sitting below the frame like a lot? Tell me that defeats the purpose of a 4x4 and the off and the ability to go off-road. How much ground clearance is lost by mounting this way? Raylene Kaywood? That motor looks low exclamation point question mark. As it can't go that way, there's the smallest speed bump there, low. That means no longer a pickup truck, and the only purpose is a YouTube video. So we've got this one all welded, notched, ready to go back in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this motor mount in place and we're gonna weld it to the posts. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. So this one's, I'm gonna say the easy one because we can actually move those posts wherever and lock it in. The other one, the posts are already gonna be there. So it'll be a little more challenging to get things exact, but we'll do our best. All right, this is the second bar. I got things tacked into place, so we're just gonna go ahead and do some welds on this one, get it ready to mount on the vehicle. Defiance Garage, 9896. I couldn't really tell, but it looked like that motor hung way down. What's the ground clearance now? Chris-BG8MK. Looks like you lost a lot of ground clearance, or is that just the camera angle? So what we're doing now is we're gonna take off all these bolts, take the motor mounts off, and then uh, put this on the welding table to do full welds for everything. Give it a coat of paint and put it back on. All right, we are done. This is all welded up. I'm going to now kind of uh, scuff it up, use a wire wheel, clean all the surfaces, and then do some paint. All right, got it all cleaned up. So we'll wipe this down with some acetone and put a layer of paint. Okay. 
All right, the paint is all set up. I used the new uh, Steel It and I like it. So this is supposedly weldable. So that way in the future, if I want to, I can weld something on this. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on the truck. Last thing we need to do, so I took the motor down because frame has to like go in and the motor's gotta go in. So took the motor down, now I've gotta put the frame in, then we'll get these jacks and things back in place and lift the motor up. So I don't think that was the way to do it. Um, for whatever reason, I think in the motor mounts were down, they're up. So I gotta put the motor on first and then we'll put it back in. Let's see, probably be easier if this was upside down, but I'll just take this one off. There we go. So we got the motor mounted to the motor mount. We're now just going to roll this in place. I'm actually thinking about maybe trying to use the engine hoist as well. Um, I just don't like putting jacks under it. And anyways, it seems to wobble. So uh, there is a hole where the shifter used to be. So I'm gonna see if I can sneak this one in and uh, lift it up. So we got this in. I was able to hoist it right through there. However, the center of mass is like too far over. So basically when I lift it up, it's not in place. I need to kind of bring it back this way. So I still need to use uh, jacks and things under there. I'll probably leave this attached. So like if for whatever reason it kind of comes off the jack, it won't go all the way to the concrete. But uh, yeah, we'll keep going and uh, shift things into place and bolt it to the truck. Again, the motor's not like sagging. I think that'll be good. And again, I'll see if I can put the original uh, mount in place, but basically this is actually higher than the original transmission transfer case mount. All right, so I'm gonna have to hold it in place with my legs. Come on, dude. So I'm getting 14 and a half. And then, oh dear, and right by my face, we're like right at 15. Ooh. So just a little bit higher than the original one. Let's see if I can get some better shots. So new mount higher than the original. So I know even when I do this, people are gonna say, you still did it wrong, or this could have been triangulated, or this or that. By all means, put them in the comments. I like to read the comments. One thing I do always do, when we do these things, um, we will always uh, test them out, try them out. If something looks like it's not strong enough, if something's wiggling, wobbling, we always have the option to make it better. So I'm under here, and I know somebody's gonna say like, hey, this should be triangulated or something. Um, it's pretty robust. Um, there might be some places to do some triangulation, but I figured I'd kind of think I'm moving the whole truck. When we do the uh, skid plate, we'll probably find a couple more places to uh, triangulate and make things even more robust. Is that moving? Or am I just moving the whole truck? So that'll do it for this time. We got a new motor mount made. It is now sitting way higher about three inches higher, higher than the original transfer case and transmission mount. So hopefully that'll make it that much better. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Toyota. God, so many freaking airplanes. It's airplane season. Is that moving? Or am I just moving the whole truck?